In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to use AI to write a blog post step by step. And I have used this strategy to get more than 10 million people to read my blog posts. And I have also sold products worth well over $1 million in the past couple of years. And by the way, this is not your typical AI writing guide where I show you all these secret prompts and super expensive AI SEO tools. Instead, I will keep it simple, realistic, and I will show you how AI actually works without selling some BS advice like all these other guides are trying to do. Now, if you're interested in becoming a successful blogger and turning it to a full career like I have done, make sure to sign up to my free masterclass by clicking the link in the description. There you will receive a free 30 minute training video as well as some super useful material such as blog post templates. But now let's get into the video. So the most important thing when it comes to writing a blog post is finding a good blog post topic. And as I've stated millions of times before, it doesn't really make sense to choose a random blog post topic where you write about yourself or about something that people might not be that interested in. So instead what you want to do is you need to write about topics that are on demand. So you need to write about something like let's say how to lose weight or how to build muscle or stuff like that. So there needs to be a huge audience searching for the information that you're covering in your blog post content if you want to write a successful blog post these days. And by the way, the reason to this is simple. These days people can just watch these random videos on YouTube or TikTok where they see a random person doing random things. But blogging is no longer about that. You don't really connect that deeply with somebody through writing and that's why people don't really watch or read blog posts anymore they watch these videos but people still definitely read blogs and I would probably say that people actually read blogs more than ever before because all the information is in a form of blog posts these days. Now let me show you a couple of awesome ways you can use AI to find these blog post topic ideas. So basically all you really need to do is open up Google and type in something related to your niche or to your topic. And you're going to see all these suggestions. For example, let's do soccer, how to. And all these suggestions that you see right here, these are all great blog post topic ideas. And these are made by Google's AI. And what I mean by Google's AI is that Google has a lot of data. They see everything that people search and they now have made these predictions here with their AI that is using the existing data of search volumes to predict what is the most likely search that I'm about to perform after I've typed in soccer how-to. So these AI generated suggestions are not just some random predictions but instead these are awesome blog post topic ideas. And I'm not, su I'm not su suggesting you to pick any one of these. It doesn't mean that these are automatically all great blog post topic ideas, but these are your great starting point. Oh, and one more thing, just remember to use the Google incognito mode or at least to delete your search history so that these suggestions are not affected by what you have searched in the past. And then in a very similar fashion, you can, for example, search for one of these suggested topics here. So for example, let's say that you want to write a blog post about how to play defense in soccer. You're going to search for soccer, how to play defense, and you're going to see all these results. But the interesting part here is that you're also going to see, see these people also ask section questions. And as you may have already guessed, these are also AI generated blog post topic ideas. And in fact, if you drop down some of these, you're going to see that Google will add more and more and more of these. And some of these people also ask questions, make a really good blog post topic, or these can actually even be your subtopics in your blog post. So for example, you could take some of these and add them as your talking points. And the only thing to keep in mind is that I don't suggest blindly taking these and writing about these or blindly using these as your sub talking points in your blog posts 
But what I suggest you doing instead is verifying that it actually makes sense in your context. So you don't want to include some random topics from here. And also you don't want to duplicate because most of the time I have actually seen that these people also ask section questions are repeating one another. For example, these two, how to play good defense in soccer or how to be a best defender. These are essentially the same thing. So you don't want to add repetition to your blog post. So definitely don't just blindly use these people also ask sections questions in your blog post. And then if you scroll down a bit further from this people also ask section, you will also see these people also search for questions or search terms. And very similar to the previous two examples, these are also good blog post topic ideas. So these are related queries to this search term, this main search term that you're seeing right here. And these are also great blog post topic ideas. And these might also give you some ideas to the content you should add to this how to play defense in soccer search, for example. So this is how you can use Google's AI for free to find blog post topic ideas. So all you really need to do is type in your niche soccer, for example, then how to or something similar to see these suggestions. And these are your blog post topics. And then just search for one to see what kind of related topics there are. And speaking of blog post topics, one of the things that I love to do occasionally is write about trending topics. And this is simply because these topics are low in competition. So if there is a new trend or a new product, not many people have written a blog post about that because it's brand new. And that's also good because there are lots of people and the number is increasing all the time searching for that product or that topic or whatever it is. And this gives you an awesome opportunity to write a blog post with ease that ranks relatively quickly and that also makes some really nice income through affiliate marketing and gets a lot of views if that's what you're after. So once again, you can use a free AI tool called Google Trends. And this tool uses AI to group related queries and related search terms together to show you these trendy topics and also how they are trending right now. So let me show you how to use this one as well. Now, first and foremost, you can search for something. For example, let's search for soccer here. And then you can choose the region. For example, we can do worldwide and we can do the past five years as the time range. And now here you can see how people are searching for the search term soccer on Google. And it comes as not a big surprise to see these spikes right around these times when there is a major tournament or a major event in soccer. Now, these numbers are just relative to these maximum points. So for, exa for example, here we have 100% and everything else is less than or equal to that. So we're just going to see these percentages here. So you can't just say that, for example, here soccer has 80 searches or 79 searches per month. This is just relative to what is the highest spike during this time period. So basically, what I'm trying to say here is that this is showing you how people are searching for that topic, but you can't make anything out of these numbers here. So it, it won't tell you if this has 1 million searches or 10 million searches. This is something you can't no anyway in anywhere because that is not publicly available data no matter what these seo tools will tell you these are always secret so only things that you can see are these google trends from google's own ai data and this is the only way for you to reliably track the performance of a search term so this shows you how you can use google trends but this example is not particularly useful as a blogger so now let me show you how to take it to a completely different level so what you want to do on Google Trends is find these related or related queries that appear here at the bottom of the page, because these are new trends that have popped up during this time period. And these are your blog post topics if you choose your main topic carefully. But for example, here, it wouldn't really make sense to write a blog post about Dream League Soccer 2022. For example, people don't expect to read a blog post on what is Dream League, League Soccer 2022. They are probably after the results. They want to see the live coverage. So you can't just go ahead and 
choose a random topic and ra then randomly choose a blog post topic from this related query section. You need to be a bit more clever than that. And now I'm going to show you one of my favorite ways for you to do this. So for instance, let's search for AI here. And now also, instead of doing past five years, let's do something way less than that. For example, past 90 days. Now this shows you what's trending in this AI space during the past 90 days worldwide. And if we now search for or scroll down a bit, we're going to see these related queries. And these are the topics, for example, Wiggle AI, Devin AI, Character AI Old, Keeper AI, Find AI, Get IMG AI. These are all topics that have popped up into the scene during the past 90 days. For instance, let's, for example, choose this Character AI Old. If we search for that, on Google Trends, you can see that it started to get massive popularity right around March, which is about two months ago. And these are some topics that might be good blog post topic candidates. So for example, if I go here, if I go to this, for example, we can search for hyper AI. We can see that it's a trend that has popped up during the past 90 days. If I search for that, you can actually see that it is an AI video generator product. And this is an awesome opportunity for you to write a review about this product because this is a new trend. Not a lot of people have heard of this tool yet and not a lot of people have actually written a blog post about this tool just yet. So you might be among the first people ever to cover this topic, yet it has a ton of hype and momentum around it. So you could write an, a hyper AI review that would rank on Google. And for example, I can show you one example of myself doing this. So I don't know if you can see here anymore. Well, here it is. So for example, here is the get IMG AI. So this is one of these related queries related to the AI space. And now if I search for get IMG AI review, you can actually see that the number one result is written by myself. It's two months ago, written by Arthur Alli on Medium. And this is exactly what I did. So when I came up with this blog post topic idea, I opened up Google Trends, I chose AI as the topic, and I searched for these related queries here. And it's super simple. I think that this blog post ranked at the number one spot in just a couple of hours because I was one of these first people to ever cover this topic thoroughly. So you have all these BS blog posts that have been written by ChatGPT, but instead what I did was that I actually tried out this product and here I'm showing the visitor exactly how to use this product and its features and what kinds of results, what is, what is the pricing. I'm also even listing this blog post where I test all these AI art generators. So this is a blog post that is basically a thorough review of this product that has just popped up here. And just one thing to keep in mind is that I don't really recommend doing this all the time. So for example, if I search for AI again here, for example, the get IMG AI, as you can see, it had a lot of hype and it was a huge thing for a day or two, but then it has completely died down. Well, it's picking up some steam again, but the problem with these topics is that your blog post success will be very shortly because people are on search only searching for some of these topics for a couple of days and then the trend will completely die down and also at the same time the competition will catch up so other people will realize that there is this new tool that they should review to make some affiliate income from it for example and the competition will go up like this while the trend is dying down like this so it's going to be hundreds of times harder to get a reader to your blog post in just a couple of weeks than it was right around the time when you published it. So please don't use this strategy all the time. I would use it like five to 10% of the time. So this will give you fast results. You might see fast commissions as an affiliate marketer. You might see a lot of followers if you're using Medium. And if you're making a video about this topic, you can also get a lot of visitors or viewers on that. But it is a good, kind of a secondary strategy, almost like a growth hack, but something you should definitely build your blog posts or blog on, because if you write, let's say 100 of these, you might make it to a million readers per month, but that will only last for that one month. So that's not a sustainable strategy. You don't want to do that that often. 
then one of the most important aspects when it comes to writing a successful blog post is analyzing your competition. And this is simply because every single blog post is like a small business. It needs to be the best product in the internet if you want it to succeed. Because why on earth would any kind of a platform or any kind of a search engine promote a product or a search result that is the second best result? No, that's not what you want to do. You don't just want to write another take on something. You want to write the absolute best piece of content on the entire internet about your topic. And that's why you need to do some careful analysis. So you need to see what's already out there and then you need to create this kind of a blueprint on how to do it 10 times better. And this is where you can use AI. So of course you can just go ahead, open up Google, search your topic and for example, open up all these top 10 search results. That's one way you can do it and that's actually how I do it. But if you're not that good at that just yet, you can also use AI and ask AI to search for all these topics. So for instance, you can use ChatGPT4 and ask it to search the internet for your topic and analyze your competitors. And I have left a link to the place where you can find all these prompts that I'm using in this video. But just be sure to tweak those and adjust those because this is not rocket science. People make prompt engineering seem like a real thing because they're probably trying to sell something. But when it comes to blogging, there is really no such thing as prompt engineering. You get similar results with entirely different prompts. So just feel free to use your own imagination and just tell the AI exactly what you want to do so that it knows what it should focus on. So for example, if I want to analyze my competitors, I can tell the AI that, okay, I want to write the best post on the internet. I want to make it 10 times better than what already exists. Can you analyze these top 10 search results and see what's in common, what's missing, and what is the things, or what are the things that I can do better? So that's just the gist of it. Alrighty, so let me show you a concrete example of this as well. So let's say that I want to write a blog post that reviews a product and I want to rank on Google. Now, what I can do is I can ask ChatGPT to analyze my competition so that I know what it takes exactly to produce a piece of content that is 10 times better than what already exists. Because as I've stated before, that is the only way for you to rank on Google. You can't just give another take on something. You need to be the absolute best resource. So for instance, here I'm telling ChatGPT that I want to write a blog post that reviews this product called Get IMG AI. And now I'm just telling it that I want it to list out everything that my competitors are doing when they are reviewing this product. And then I'm also letting the AI know that I want to write the best post on the internet. I want to cover absolutely everything related to this product. And I want to make it 10 times better than what my competitors have done. And here you can see that the AI is giving me very good suggestions. So it's showing me that I should introduce, I should share my user experience and inter interface, I should list the features, advanced features, performance, speed, plans and value, pros and cons, stuff like that. And here's, for example, one thing that takes it to a completely different level. So for instance, I'm also going to compare it with other similar products. And yes, this is indeed going to take a lot of work and that's what you can't really do with AI. So instead of just trying this one simple product and writing a review, I might actually also need to try out different products because all these other tutorials, including the one that I have written, are already covering this topic basically from A to Z. So these existing blog posts have already reviewed the Get IMG AI product in such a thorough and good way that there is no reason for Google to rank just another blog post about that topic because they already have good blog posts to choose from. So here's where you take it to a completely different level. So you're showing yourself using the product, you're sharing your own opinions, basically pros and cons, you're comparing it to alternatives. And here you will find even more great tips for making the blog post better than what already exists. So this is how you write a blog post you can ask ChatGPT to analyze the competition and ask it to list the features that these competing posts have and all the shortcomings that they have and the things that you can do to make it 10 times better. So yeah, this is kind of a time saver, 
but also this is actually going to list you some ideas that you might not have thought of before and it might actually end up taking more time but that's good that's not a problem because if you implement all these you're probably going to rank on google and that's at the end of the day what helps people as well so you're not just writing a rephrased version of what already exists but you're also testing the product you're sharing your experience and expertise you're actually adding to the internet which is the core concepts of a successful blog post so you can't just write something that already exists then the next thing is writing an outline so basically when you write a blog post if it's let's say it's a 3000 word blog post and you have blank page in front of you that's very intimidating isn't it but if you split it down into let's say 10 or 20 sub posts that is you create this kind of a consistent and logical outline that job becomes a lot easier because you don't need to write a 3000 word blog post but you can write 20 pieces of 200 word blog posts or however the math plays out but yeah so you definitely want to use or you definitely want to split your blog post into these kind of a outline first and then write it and once again here's how you can use ai to do that so for example let's say that i'm writing a blog post about how to play soccer what i can do is that i can ask ChatGPT to write the most comprehensive logical and consistent and thorough outline related to this topic so that the blog post becomes more informative and more enjoyable and whatever it is useful and whatever than any one of these existing results on the internet and this is super useful especially for me as an experienced person because sometimes for example when i write blog posts about let's say how to start a blog i might take things for granted that most people won't because i simply have more experience than my audience and this leads me to forgetting all these important things from the outline so that's why i can use ChatGPT to basically fill in these gaps that i'm forgetting and as you can see here we have probably more than 50 outline talking points that are produced by ChatGPT that all make probably sense for me to cover in this blog post now the only thing you need to be careful with these ai written outlines is that there is usually a lot of repetition so you might have a talking point right over here and then you might have that same talking point right over here in just different words so what you need to do is go through this carefully you need to change things around change the text rearrange these talking points remove duplicates and also what you want to do is keep your audience in mind so probably it doesn't make sense to talk about history if your goal is to for example teach something very quick and something very actionable so you want to keep your outline very thorough very informative but still very simple and something that is easy to follow and something that is enjoyable to read to your audience so use this with care don't just blindly copy paste this because these are not going to make your blog posts that great you need to rearrange edit reconsider regenerate and make the blog post outline actually something that person that's going to read this blog post will enjoy then one of the more annoying things that I know is fixing those grammar mistakes and punctuation errors and these subtle style details in your blog posts manually. This is super boring. It is one of the parts that I hate the most because it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of patience and it breaks your flow if you're for example doing it while you're writing and you usually need to do that separately so that is a stupid time consumer that you want to get rid of and in fact you can do that with ai and i have been doing this basically since the day one when i started blogging so you can use a tool like grammarly or a tool like wordtune if you want to automate this process so instead of having to focus on these silly little grammar mistakes you can just let the ai do it and it will do it automatically and you can just basically one click all these mistakes to fix those errors now let me also show you a concrete example of myself using grammarly so for example here i have speed typed a blog post section and it has a lot of mistakes now if i disabled grammarly here you could actually see that it looks like a normal piece of text now if you don't pay a close attention to this you're not going to find these mistakes 
But once I turn Grammarly on here on Medium blog post editor, I'm going to see all these silly little mistakes that pop up here. And one of the things that I love is that it's not only showing me these issues, but it's also giving me fixes. So I can just click here to fix these mistakes and it's giving me the correct suggestion. And of course, it's not 100% accurate. So there are some mistakes that it, it is going to miss, but most of the time it's going to fix like at least 95% of your writing issues. And what I love about this is that you can just focus on writing your blog post. You don't really need to pay attention to the grammar mistakes and punctuation and style and that because the Grammarly is taking care of that on your behalf. Just don't blindly trust it because some of these suggestions are not that great, but most of the time it is. The only issue I have with Grammarly these days is that the free version is getting more and more limited and you're always going to see these premium suggestions and you're going to only have three of these per day. And these days, if I write even a decent piece of content that I'm very satisfied with, it is still going to give me a lot of these yellow warnings and suggesting me to get the premium plan, which I definitely don't need. I'm still using the free plan. I have used the free plan all the time. Other than that, other than these silly get premium suggestions, this tool is awesome and it will save you a lot of time and it's all thanks to AI. And now I hate to spoil the party, but do not use AI to write content. Yes, I'm saying that. Do not use AI to write your blog post content. There are so many issues that arise that you're simply never going to see your blog post rank unless you are super lucky and that luck won't last for long either. So the problem with AI content is that it's basically just summarizing what it has seen on the internet. So for example, if you write a blog post about how to play soccer and you use AI to write that blog post, Yes, for sure, you can write a decent piece of content that has even some generic stock footage or some AI generated images. But the problem is that this blog post is just like an averaged out version of these top 10 search results that already exist. And as I said before, if you want to have any chance to rank high on Google or to spread your blog post on a platform, you need to make it 10 times better than what already exists. And this is where the AI restriction comes in. So the AI can perform at most as good as these existing results. Usually it's doing a lot worse results or creating a lot worse blog posts. But in theory, if you optimize all your prompts, if you do some editing, if you create some wonderful AI images, in theory, you might be able to produce a blog post that is almost as good as one of these top 10 search results on Google. But that is the problem. It is not the best product on the internet and it is not the best blog post on the internet and that's why it will never ever rank. And I have, by the way, tried that out. I have actually made a separate video. I have written blog posts about that experiment, but I basically see, or I basically saw absolutely no results with AI blog posts simply because they don't add anything to the internet. And on top of that, if you write with AI, also, you're introducing all these factual mistakes, you're introducing plagiarism, and you're basically writing inauthentic, unoriginal, not so unique pieces of content. And that is simply very boring to read as well. So you can clearly see that those pieces of content are not connecting with the audience as well either. So even if there was not that big problem that is restricted by these existing search results, these would still be able to turn the tide and you would still probably be able to see much better results by not using AI to write. But do not use AI to write blog posts. It simply doesn't work. You need to put in the hard work and you need to put in the time and effort to share your unique experiences, expertise, show your images, create visualizations, create infographics, illustrations, format these blog posts nicely, make it accessible to any, anybody and everybody, try to find a logical outline, remove duplication, check facts, link to epic resources, make some videos even, or at least embed some videos. And these are all things that the AI can't really do. So just don't use AI to write content. Now, speaking of writing a blog post, please make it simple. 
these days and especially in the day and age of internet where every single person is busy, you want to be able to make or write a blog post that solves a problem or delivers a message as easily as possible and it needs to be accessible to everybody. And this means that you want to use simple language in your blog posts. And for example, if, if you watch this video or if you have read any one of my blog posts, you will see that I'm using super simple language. I don't want to try to outsmart people that are supposed to relate to me. And also, I don't want to act differently than what I am. So I want to be myself when I write blog posts. I want to be myself when I'm making these videos. So I'm not trying to use language that I normally wouldn't use. As you can see, it's very simple to understand and it's very effective. And this is also where you can use AI. So you can use AI to optimize your content for an eighth grader. And that is one of the best formats to write. So you want to write so that even a kid can understand. Alrighty, so here's an example. Look at this sentence. It has a lot of these super scientific terms that make it really hard to understand what's even going on in this sentence. And you don't want to leave content like this on your blog post. Of course, I'm not saying that you will accidentally write a sentence like this. But what I'm trying to say here is that if you're trying to over explain something or if you have a super long sentence that's trying to explain something very simple, you can take it and you can ask ChatGPT to simplify. It. As you can see, this is now much more understandable right here than it is right here. So instead of using a word like a canine quadruped, it is using dog. <laughs> That's much more easy for the audience to understand. And this sentence is also a lot shorter than the above one. Then one of the more obvious ways for you to use AI as a blogger is to find title ideas. So if you think about a blog post, let's say you write a blog post on how to lose weight. If you create a title like how to lose weight, that is an awesome title. It's simple, concise, and it describes exactly what's happening in the blog post. But the problem with a title like this is that there are probably at least 1 million blog posts with the exact same title. So you want to do things to stand out there as well. And here's, here's where you can use AI too. So um, first and foremost, you should add numbers to your title. You should use words like, for example, in the weight loss example, you could, you could use words like easy ways to lose weight or lose weight with minimal exercise or whatever. You want to use these enticing words that are making the title more clickable. But you can also use AI to create these kind of title ideas. And once again, you need to be careful with AI because most of these titles may become too generic, they may become too long, so you want to keep it still very short and concise. But what I might do is I might ask ChatGPT to write, let's say, 10 or 20 or even 50 title ideas to give me some inspiration for what kinds of words or phrases I should use in the title. Now, the next thing you need to do is to boost your SEO before you publish your blog post. So what I basically mean by this is that you need to make your blog post reader friendly and user friendly so that search engines like it to rank it high on Google and other search engine results pages. So yeah, that's where you can also use AI. And especially if you're a beginner, and you're not that great at analyzing your content and comparing it with your competitors, you can use AI to analyze your blog post. Alrighty, so here I have one of my blog posts on bloggersgoto.com. And this is in fact an AI generated blog post. But what I'm trying to demonstrate to you with this one is how you can actually make a blog post better by using AI. And what I can just do is basically take this blog post URL and ask ChatGPT to read this blog post and improve it. And by the way, if you want to use the same prompt that I have done here, you can just check the link in the description. There you will find a blog post that lists all these prompts that I'm using. Nonetheless, now the AI is giving me tips on how to make this blog post a lot better. So it has read it through carefully and it's letting me know that I need to improve the introduction, I need to clear the objective. I need to add some actionable advice and do some case studies, quote experts, do visual in, in enhancements. I need to use my own images, 
illustrations, charts, whatever, interactive elements even. And of course, not all of these are something you should do. But whatever is feasible, whatever is something you can do in the time frame of, let's say, 5 to 10 hours, is something you should definitely do. So for example, if this is suggesting me to do some customer research and spend like 100 hours on doing some kind of stuff like that, that's obviously not going to make sense because it's not going to make that big of a difference. But if this is, for example, telling me to take my own images or if it's suggesting me to create an infographic at the beginning, then that's probably something I should do because if I don't implement most of these improvements, the blog post is probably not that great and it's not going to rank on Google, whatever happens. Then the next thing when it comes to making your blog posts accessible is by writing alt texts to your images. And what I basically mean by this is that people are also listening to blog posts. People are not just reading them all the time. So people might be first and foremost visually impaired. And also there are people that go out for a walk or jogging and they just want to listen to a blog post. And that's where you need to be able to describe these images to the people that are listening to those blog posts. And this is what the alt texts are for. So it is not the same thing as the caption. The caption is adding some kind of um, additional context to those images, but the alt text should describe exactly what you see in the image. So for example, it could be something like a brown cat standing in the middle of a field during a thunderstorm or something like that. So it should exactly describe what's happening. So let me show you an example of this as well. So here I have a WordPress blog post that I'm editing right now. And here's an image that I want to write an alt text to, because as you can see on the right hand side, this image doesn't have an alt text. Of course, I could write something like a person writing on a paper, but if alt texts are not something you're too familiar with, or if it's something that you probably would rather do with AI, you can go to ChatGPT and you can drag and drop your image into the view and ask it to write a short alt text. And sometimes the alt text becomes too long. So this is way too long of an alt text. It should only contain like 100 characters or whatever. So you can ask it to be a lot shorter. <laughs> this is actually already good. A person writing on a paper with a pen. Then I can just click on it and paste the alt text right here. And there is your alt text. Now you can update the blog post and this image is accessible to everybody. So these days, nobody is going to read a boring wall of text anymore. Blog posts are way more than just text. In fact, writing a blog post is the easy part. Putting together a visual multimedia piece of content that shares expertise, experiences, and adds value is the hard part. Doing the legwork is the hard part. So if you want to write a successful blog post, you need to add a lot of images. For instance, I have a blog post about this video that you're watching right now. And that blog post has about 90 images. And I'm trying to add images everywhere where I can. I try to add so many images that in almost every single frame of the blog post, you would see at least one or two images. But now before I show you how to use AI to generate these images, you need to be careful. So first, you should prioritize images that you have taken yourself. So for example, in my blog posts, I would say that 98 or 99% of my images are taken by myself. So those might be screenshots of myself using a product or software. Those might be images of myself holding something. But whatever it is, you should prioritize your own images because these are unique and these are actually good fits for your blog content. They actually support the learning. Then you should only use AI images or basically stock images. So you can use AI tools such as Ideogram to generate free AI images. But the problem with these images is that those are usually not that accurate. So for example, one day I asked ChatGPT to generate an image of myself wearing the Bose NC700 headset and turning it on. And well, the image looked good. It actually looked a lot better than what I was able to take in this office space. But the problem was that the headset was wrong, the button was in the wrong place, and basically it didn't add any value to the blog post, so I just decided to take my own image. 
even though it wasn't that great, it still like de delivered the message in a better way. So just make sure that you use your own images 99% of the time. And if you absolutely have to, then you should use this either stock images or even AI generated images to fit your context. You can use a free tool called Ideogram to generate your AI images. So for example, let's say that I want an image of a Finnish countryside to my Finnish rental cottage website. I can just ask this AI to generate one. And after 15 seconds or so, you're going to see these images. Some of these don't look that great. For example, this text makes absolutely no sense, but this, this image looks pretty much exactly how it looks here in Finland. So there's very little details with which you could tell that this is an AI generated image. So if you wanted to add a stock image and you can't find one, you can generate one with AI, but just remember not to use this a lot because these usually don't add anything to the, to the blog post. These don't help delivering your message that well. So if you're demonstrating something, for example, how to play soccer or how to play tennis, you can't really position yourself in these images or ask the AI to create a pose or create even a video of yourself doing something. So that's why you should always put in the time and effort to create those visuals yourself. And speaking of images, one thing you might want to spend some time on, depending on your niche, is featured images. So basically every single blog post has this kind of a cover photo or featured image that will be shared wherever you share your blog post. So for instance, if you share your blog post on LinkedIn or on Facebook, WhatsApp, wherever, it is going to render this kind of an image that is usually a random image from that blog post. But there is a way for you to set this image manually. And for example, if you want your story or your blog post to go viral on a, on a platform such as like, let's say Medium, LinkedIn, you need to choose a featured image carefully. You want to make it clickable. And this is where you can also use AI. So for instance, I use AI all the time when I create featured images as well as thumbnails for my YouTube videos. So for instance, I might take an image of myself sitting right here and then I use AI to remove the background of that image. I might also take some existing photos that I have and use an AI upscaler to improve the image quality. Now, one of these awesome platforms you can use AI to generate your featured images with, or at least assist with, is called Canva. Now, for example, let's take an image of myself here. Now, if I want to create a compelling featured image, I should either remove the background from this image or expand it to spread across the screen. And in fact, I can do both with just a couple of clicks by using AI. So for example, I can use the magic expand feature and then the AI will predict what the original image would look like with a bigger or broader background. And this is, I think, super cool. And there are a couple of options as well. And I can actually also see that it generated a copy of myself. <laughs> and as I said, you can also remove the background from one of your images. So for example, I can do it like this. Then what I can also do is I can use ChatGPT to generate these backgrounds for these images. For example, I can tell ChatGPT that I want an AI theme background for my featured image. So for example, here's now one of these. I can now copy paste this here and I can spread it across the screen right here like this. I can change the position to be backward and then I can even make it a lot more transparent. I can change the color of the background here. So for instance, if I wanted to do something like this, it would look a lot cooler. And as you can see, now we're starting to form this kind of a featured image that I might be able to use in one of my blog posts. So these are all the features that you can use with AI to create these awesome featured images or cover photos for your blog posts. And there are lots of these, so you can edit the image in Canva. These all magic edit, grab text, magic expand. These all are AI features that will make your blog post or your featured image creation process a lot smoother. Instead of having to like, like doing everything manually, you can just use a couple of clicks of a button to get everything done. 
And then one super powerful way for you to boost your blog post performance is by taking that one big blog post that you have just written and splitting it to let's say 10 or 20 pieces of content and then promoting or publishing those blog posts on other platforms such as like LinkedIn, Medium, wherever. And then each blog post promotes that main blog post. So you have like a parent blog post that is 5,000 words in length. And then you have like, let's say 10 or 20 child posts that are 500 or even 250 words in length. And each of these child posts is promoting the main parent post. And if you're not good at this, you can use AI. You can ask AI to read your blog post and come up with, let's say, 20 viral ideas from that content. And that's how you can get inspiration for you to write these shorter blog posts that might go viral on platforms like Medium or LinkedIn. And then you will get a lot of traffic to that main post as well. Alrighty, so here is the example blog post that you already saw earlier. So this is productivity tips for working at home. And this is a super long piece of text and it has a lot of great tips. Now, if I want to repurpose this and if I want to add these smaller blog posts on platforms such as Medium or LinkedIn to promote this one bigger post, I can just copy the URL of this post and I can go to ChatGPT and I can ask it to generate these repurposed content ideas. Now the AI has analyzed this blog post and it has given me awesome blog post ideas, or at least it's saying that these are awesome ideas to write smaller posts based on this one huge post to promote this bigger post. So now what you can do is you should obviously go through these with care. So some of these make absolutely no sense. For example, 10 unexpected benefits of working from home. I'm not sure whether that's something I would like to do because it's essentially what this blog post already is. But you can use these to your inspiration. You can use these as a guideline for creating these smaller posts. And then whenever you're satisfied with one of these, you can ask the GPT to generate a small outline for one of these posts. And then you just write the post out and then you place a link to this main post somewhere at the blog post where it makes sense, where it naturally fits. So you don't want to force it. You want to make sure that it benefits the audience and then you can just publish all these blog posts or at least those that you think that make sense on platforms like Medium or LinkedIn and then you might see a nice traffic boost to your main post. And I must admit that this is not a strategy that I use a lot but I have heard a lot of good news from it. So depending on your niche you can try to use this. So for instance in my niche where I talk about software reviews or coding I'm not doing it that often. In software reviews, I might do, for example, if I have a blog post on best AI writing tools, I might also write a separate review for each of the tool in that one huge list. So in that sense, I'm doing this there as well. But for example, in the coding blog posts where I'm teaching how to write code, it doesn't really make sense to split it into these smaller sub posts because that one blog post captures the whole topic or it covers the whole thing and it doesn't even make sense to split it into smaller sections but also because people are not interested in those topics those are not kind of trendy topics that would start skyrocketing on platforms like medium or linkedin it doesn't really make sense so you need to use some common sense here i'm not sure if you get what i'm saying but if you have a very boring topic that is interesting in to only a couple of people in the world it doesn't really help no matter how hard you try in creating these kind of viral posts based on that one post because that information or that demand is not high no matter what you do. Then one awesome way for you to use AI as a blogger is also to populate your blog posts with AI driven ads. And what I mean by this is that these days it's not efficient for you to just place a random ad banner on your blog content it will be irrelevant for 99.9% .9 of your audience. But what you can do instead is you can sign up to these AI-driven ad platforms such as Google AdSense or Mediavine or Raptive. And these platforms will populate your blog posts with ads based on the reader's interests. So for instance, if you have a visitor that has visited a hotel page before they came to your blog post, they will see ads related to hotels. 
And this is the idea. So they use data and AI to optimize these ad placements and ad types based on what your reader is interested in and based on what they have visited during that day. And this is cool because this all takes place behind the scenes. So all you really need to do is sign up to an AI platform or AI ad platform and they will take care of the rest. So this is very easy to do as well. And now we come to my favorite part. This is the bonus tip for the day. If you want to make money as a blogger and if you want to get a huge audience of, as a blogger, write about AI. And yes, I definitely mean this because most of my income and most of my best performing blog posts are related to AI. So I write these AI software reviews. I write these AI tutorials. I create videos of myself using AI as a blogger and whatever it is, and these, especially these blog posts that review some products such as like AI photo colorizing tools or AI image generators, I have seen some of my blog posts get up to a million reads. And this is crazy right now. So the AI has a lot of hype and it has all these new trends that are popping up constantly. So you want to target these. So in fact, ironically enough, one of the best ways for you to use AI as a blogger is by writing about AI. So you can try out these AI products or write about these AI trends and you will see lots of great results because there, there is not much competition. There are no key players yet because this space is very new and it has a lot of hype and all these tools have so good commissions so you can actually make some decent income with these AI posts as well. Just as an example, here is a blog post that I wrote like two weeks ago or three weeks ago and this blog post has about, and actually we can check it from here, it has about 600 views, yeah. So this is not even ranking high at Google search results, but this blog post has actually made me over $200. And this just goes to show you the power of these AI product reviews or AI blog posts. So I have written a blog post where I try every single one of these AI headshot generators and I'm actually sharing what kinds of results I've seen with these products and what is my recommendation and whatnot. And now that people are reading this blog post, if they click one of my links, so for example, if they click here, here or here, and they sign up, they create these images and they pay for those images, I will earn a commission. And this has been a super powerful strategy for me. So I would say that at least 90%, no, not 90%, but I would say 70 to 80% of the money that I have made as a blogger has come through these AI reviews and AI blog posts. So make sure to give it a try. Oh, and one more thing before we go. The AI automation is not going to save you a lot of time. It will probably save you only one to 3%. And yeah, that is huge in my opinion. But sadly, all these content platforms and all these AI SEO gurus will tell you that you can save like 90% of your time. So instead of working, let's say 50 hours a week, you will only need to work for a couple of hours a week and write hundreds of quality blog posts that will rank high. But sadly, that is not how it works. This is only because these AI SEO gurus want to become rich. They want to sell their course to you. They want to sell their pricey products to you. They don't care about your performance one bit. I have seen that almost or basically all of these AI SEO or AI blogging guides are full of absolute garbage. They are just there to make the author rich. And these types of blog posts or these types of videos usually generate $1 per view. So if you watch an AI SEO or AI blogging guide that has, let's say, 10,000 views, it might easily have paid $10,000 to that author. Let's be honest, if there was a way for you to work only for a couple of hours a week and use AI to write blog posts, there would never be a single tutorial teaching how to do that because all these people would be doing that and multiplying that by 100. If you optimize everything that I said in this video, you might save one week from an entire year if you write full time like I do. And you might save an hour or two every single week but you're not going to save like tens of hours or you're not going to like 10x your output. That's just simply not how it works. That is a flat out lie that all these platforms are pushing to you. Don't listen to that. It is BS. It is all trying to sell you some products. It is not how it works. AI can only save you a fraction of time, but you should still use it.